Bored Dad at Home discovers Twitch. Film at 11. <laughs> yeah. yeah, basically, that's that's the game. Uh, watch some current events. Check shit out. Uh, I guess, here, I'm going to look this up because I know that it came up in my Twitter feed this morning. Uh, present. Share screen. Let's go new tab with DuckDuckGo. All right. And I'll make myself real small. We're going to go uh, Greta Thunberg Arrest. See what, see what comes up. Because I saw some people uh, tweeting about, like right-wingers tweeting about how this was a fake arrest. So I wanted to check it out. I'm going to switch the screens around, I think. So I read the article on the big screen. And there we go. This is on that screen. So Greta Thunberg's detention sparks accusations of fake arrest. Uh, I'm going to just make sure that I've got this. It's, the audio is something we can hear. Thousands protest against expansion of lignite mine in Germany. Uh, climate activist Greta Thunberg was accused by Twitter users of staging a fake arrest after being briefly detained by German police. Greta 20 was held by law enforcement Tuesday while protesting the expansion of a coal mine in western Germany. According to Reuters, the young activists, along with a group of protesters, were warned by the police that they would be removed for, by force if they did not vac vacate the mine site. Uh, Reuters also reported that Thunberg was released from custody after an identity check by law enforcement. Uh-huh. Okay. So Tuesday, video circulated on social media. Tuesday of Thunberg standing in handcuffs while surrounded by police officers, German officers, while being before being carried away from the coal mine. In one clip posted by Catch Up Network, uh, Thunberg is seen laughing with police while standing for a photo. Okay. Yes, the Greta Thunberg arrest was staged for the established media, according to, says, the account. Uh-huh. So at Catch Up Network, I'm sure they're a very reputable and, and credible source of, of on their own, right? Like they really probably make a lot of sense and uh, aren't fake at all. Other Twitter users echoed that Thunberg's de detainment was fake, including Charlie Kirk, who gives a fuck what Charlie Kirk says, a conservative political activist who founded the organization Turning Point USA. Uh, so it turns out Greta Thunberg's arrest was a fake, as fake as the climate change cult she works for. See. The problem here is that, of course, climate change is not fake and, and Charlie Kirk is a fucking dunce. So I guess that's where we're at. Conservative political commentator Tim Young also posted about Thunberg writing, nothing says climate change is a total grift, quite like Greta Thunberg staging her own fake arrest. AOC was way better at getting fake arrested than Greta Thunberg, Young added in a separate tweet. Uh, conservative commentator was referring to New Yorker rep. AOC, commonly referred to as AOC, being detained in the summer after participating at a sit-in at the U.S. Supreme Court in protest. Okay, yeah, uh, whatever he was repeating. Uh, let's see. According to a report from the AP, Thunberg joined thousands of protesters who gathered in the western German village of Luitzerath over the weekend in protest of the government reaching a deal with a utility company to demolish the town in order to expand the coal mine. On Saturday, protesters who attempted to get close to the edge of the mine were pushed back by police, who used water cannons and batons to control the crowd, reported the AP. So on Tuesday, officers detained protesters who removed, refused to move from the site. Other Twitters praised Thunberg. Um, so, I mean, seems like, I mean, <laughs> maybe she was actually arrested. I, it sounds like, based on her own tweets, that there was not a lot of, uh, uh, like, she wasn't arrested for a very long time. They were let out relatively quickly. So, uh, yeah. So that's that's that. I'm going to stop sharing that. Um, what else? What else? Or should I check out another article on the same thing? Video of Greta Thunberg being arrested since Twitter into a frenzy. Up. Share screen. Share. All right. Oh, plus, 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 plus. Greta Thunberg arrests and sends Twitter into a frenzy. Last in the video with German police before coal mine detention. 
arrested at gold mine protest, will be freed. Yeah, so she was freed relatively quickly. Fox News, video of Greta Thunberg. Let's see what Fox News is saying about it. Time for many of, more of us to stand up. What do you mean, allow ads? I don't want your ads once. You can have it one time. There we go. Video of Greta Thunberg being arrested sends Twitter into frenzy. Time for many more of us to stand up. The 20-year-old climate activist was arrested for protesting a coal mine expansion. Uh, okay, so this is a minute 49. We'll watch the video. We're going to use force to bring it to the identity check. So please cooperate with the police. Wir sitzen hier! Auf eure Demnau! Wir sitzen hier! Auf eure Demnau! Wir sitzen hier! Auf eure Demnau! Wir sitzen hier! Mm -hmm. I hope this is it says that you can hear it so <laughs> So the police starts to bring the first persons to the identity check. No, you get famous. <laughs> Can you check this out here? <laughs> <laughs> You also want those pretty nice? <laughs> Wie sieht's denn aus mit der Badstraße? So, yeah, I don't. I think what's happened is they were like waiting in line to do identity checks, and that's what uh, they were doing there. And that's oh, okay. Thank you, uh, some random geek. <laughs> Yeah, I think they were doing identity checks, so that's that's kind of the whole thing. So they, uh, yeah, looks like they were doing identity checks, and that's what caused them to be, uh, you know, standing there for a while while they were taking pictures or whatever. Somebody was taking pictures. It wasn't necessarily staged. I don't know. It seems like. Like this guy, uh, senior digital strategist Greg Prince Price at X Strategies LLC. Who the fuck is X Strategies LLC? Like, who the fuck is this guy, and why do we care what he says? Search DuckDuckGo for that. X Strategies was born out of a friendship of. Is that is that the same fucking thing? Just whatever, whatever. I don't care about this guy. I don't care about his opinion on. Uh, Greta's arrest. Don't really think that it matters what these guys think about it. Because they're just going to deny it anyway. It doesn't fit the narrative. They don't believe in climate change. So, so be it. But yeah, so that's one of the, uh, the things that was going on. Oof. Let's share this tab instead. What else? What else was in the news? Uh, uh, what's the name of the hockey player who is uh, refusing to wear the the pride jersey? Pride jersey, usual Russian Orthodox. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so I guess we got Newsweek is the first link that comes up. So I'll click on that one first. Russian flyer, Ivan Provorov. Pavorov blasted for Pride Night refusal. Um, the Philadelphia Flyers spent part of Tuesday night's home game against the Anaheim Ducks as a way to pay respect to the LGBTQ community. One Flyers player wanted no part of it, though. Flyers defenseman Ivan Pro Provorov, a 26-year-old from Russia, decided not to skate through warm-ups wearing a Pride sweater or to use a stick wrapped in multicolored tape to honor the LGBTQ community. He claimed religious reasons for his absence in pregame activities, but later said he respected everybody. I respect everybody and I respect everybody's choices, said Pro Provorov, said before reporters. 
According to CBS News, my choice is to stay true to myself and my religion. And that's all I'm going to say. Mm hmm. Uh, I don't know. Let's see what we got. So somebody, this is a tweet, I guess. They don't even, oh, Martin Larkin from L. Larkin Hockey. This is the Flyers as it, much as it is on, on the Flyers as much as it is on Proverov. Ho, one, host Pride Night. Two, learn of a player whose religion preaches hate towards the community supported by Pride Night. Three, learn that player rejects Pride Night. Four, let him play on Pride Night. <laughs> what a slap in the face. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not one who has a lot. Russian Orthodox fakes is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's an odd one. Um, I'm not one who like puts a lot of like, uh, like I don't care that much about what hockey teams or sports teams do. Really, I, I find a lot of the the whole thing very, I don't know, uh, performative without like actually addressing issues. Uh, but sure, it's it's great to have a Pride Night. That's good. Um, but it's not it's not surprising that some players are not going to have. Uh, I mean, he's a bigot, right? <laughs> it's not surprising that some players are bigots. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Proverbs. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly rainbow capitalism. Um, they're using it as a selling point, right? Because they, they, uh, they believe that whatever, they'll attract ticket sales because they support pride, right? So Proverbs coach, John Tortella, Tortorella, said he respected his player's belief and stood behind him. Tortorella said there wasn't even a consideration of ben benching Provorov, also called Provi, for his actions. With Provi, he's being true to himself and his, re his religion. This has to do with his belief and his religion. It's one thing I respect about Provi. He's always true to himself. That's where I'm at with that, Tortorella said. The Flyers released a statement after the game saying it would continue to support the LGBTQ community. Um. What actually I, I wouldn't mind seeing was like maybe like so long, like, I don't know, some kind of boycott of ticket sales. You're not going to see it. Hockey players don't much care that much uh, as long as their team is winning, right? So the Flyers are 19 and 19 and 7 after Tuesday night's win, which puts them in seventh place in the NHL Eastern Conference Metropolitan Division. I, I Sure, whatever. <laughs> That's great. Um, hmm. All right, what's what's trending on the Twitters? Uh, let's go with share this tab instead. Five and scam section twenty eight. Greta, Catherine O'Hara. Oh, uh, that's just for me. How about trending? Proverov, Zellers. Why is Zellers trending? Um, this is not Canadians traded Zellers <laughs> for Target. Why? Uh, okay, latest. Zellers will be returning to 25 locations across Canada. <laughs> you are a hockey fan, right? Since you are Canadian, right? Eh? Uh, no, I am in fact not a hockey fan. It is not a thing I care at all about. Um, it does place me a little bit outside of the norm, <laughs> but uh, I, cannot, I can't make myself care, uh, even a little bit. I care more about Zellers, actually, <laughs> which... Uh, I'm going to share that tab instead. This is Zellers will be returning to these 25 locations across Canada. I, whatever. Curious if there's any in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, one Midtown Plaza in Saskatoon. Well, good. Nothing in Regina though. So it doesn't matter for me. I, I'm not driving up to fucking Saskatoon just to go to Zellers. But whatever, whatever. Okay. So Zellers, that was interesting for a whole second. Hockey, torts, I think that's probably uh, talking about Tortorella. Sports, Lopez is trending. What else? Anything? Anything interesting? No, no, nothing interesting. Holy cow, this is terrible. What a terrible current events. <laughs> well, this is the first that I know of, a Canadian that isn't a hockey fan. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know lots, actually. <laughs> like many, many of my friends are not hockey fans. Um, in Saskatchewan, you're supposed to be a, a Rough Rider fan as well, um, but I'm not. So I also am kind of an outlier in that way because I don't care about uh, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. When I was younger, I did. 
when I was younger, I used to watch hockey. I was a big Montreal Canadiens fan as a youth. Uh, but yeah. And I played hockey as a kid. Like, obviously that's, that's a thing that you do in Canada when you're a kid. It's, you're brought up playing hockey, but, uh, I, into high school, I learned rather quickly that most of the hockey kids were kind of dicks and I didn't really, I wasn't really interested in what they had to say. And I wasn't interested in being part of that group. Um, um, okay. So news, climate scam, Jag meat is trending in Canada. So let's go with the latest. Oh no, that's just latest tweets. What? Why is Jag meat trending? If blah 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 blah. Okay, that's not interesting. I thought this would be more interesting. <laughs> There's not that many good current events going on. On what if? Let's check out. Um, what is it? Anarchist news. Z dot org. Didn't work. Anarchist news. All right, let's share this tab instead, and then we'll we'll put myself like this. How about that? Or maybe like this. For now, till I find something. How do we tell the truth? Oh, this is interesting. T O T W fake news. How do we tell the truth from? Uh, bring this big. Oops. Oops. My phone is ringing. <clears throat> okay. Anyway. Text from my son. Oh, okay. Interesting. So this website has no hard standard for establishing what's, establishing what's real and what's not. If someone says something happened, it usually gets posted as is. And indeed, in anarchist space, anonymity and vague details are usually the rule, especially when it comes to talking about illegal stuff. But this presents a dilemma. How do we know whether something is true or not? I like that. I'm going to save that for another day, though. International call to action in solidarity with Alfredo Cos Cospito. We extend the call for international campaign in solidarity with Comrade Alfredo, Alfredo Cospito during the week of January 22nd to 28th, 80 days after the beginning of his hunger strike. Okay, that's cool. I'm liking that. Lots of cool art and stuff. Uh, if you don't, uh, I, I recommend people check out, uh, the anarchist news, uh, podcast and, and website. It's, it's usually very good. I find, um, I find lots of good information comes up there. I don't always agree with the hosts of the show as one shouldn't, but it's, it's quite, quite good. Lots of good, uh, anal analysis and thoughts and lots of good comments from various people. Uh, well, I'll just stop sharing that for now. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, anarchistnews.org. Um, it's not with a Z, apparently. I thought it was with a Z, but it's anarchistnews.org. Very good, very cool uh, well website and very cool. Uh, like, their podcast is great. I really enjoy it. Um, okay, what was the other thing I was going to do? Google News. What's happening in Google News? News. Who's Anna, Anna Walsh's husband use sons? Oh, I'm gonna, maybe I'll share this while, so people can see what I'm looking at. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's the one. All right. I'll blow it up. Anna Walsh's hubby used son's iPad to Google how long before a body starts to smell. Okay, well, that's... Uh, I think this was on the news when I was at the gym this morning. Is uh, uh, Anna, this, this guy is in court to because he apparently is accused of killing his uh wife or yeah the mother of his son or i don't know they they didn't say wife on the tv so but uh websites selling abortion pills are sharing sensitive data with google uh, according to propublica that was 33 minutes ago that's not good news Let's see what that says get out of here uh, web, websites selling abortion pills are sharing sensitive data with Google. This is from ProPublica. This was uh, just published. 
Online pharmacies that sell abortion pills are sharing sensitive data with Google and other third parties, which may allow law enforcement to prosecute those who use the medications to end their pregnancies, a ProPublica analysis has found. Using to a tool created by The Markup, a nonprofit tech journalism newsroom, ProPublica ran checks on 11 online pharmacies that sell abortion medication to reveal the web tracking technology they use. Late last year and in early January, ProPublica found web trackers on the sites of at least nine online pharmacies that pr provide pills by mail. Abortion Ease, BestAbortionPill.com, Privacy Pill RX, Pills R Online RX, Secure Abortion Pills, Abortion RX, Generic Abortion Pills, Abortion Privacy, and Online Abortion Pill RX. Wow. These third-party trackers, including a Google Analytics tool and advertising technologies, collect a host of details about users and feed them to tech behemoth Google, its parent company Alphabet, and other third parties such as the online chat provider Live Chat. Those details include the web addresses of the users that visited, what they clicked on, the search terms they use to find a website, the previous site they visited, their general location and information about the devices they use, such as whether they were on a computer or phone. Jesus. I mean, that's not good. Uh, I know a lot. Yeah. Shit, why is that so small? I wish I could. Yeah, so you guys can read it too. I mean, not that you necessarily want to read it while I'm reading it out loud to you, but. <clears throat> the nine sites that are, are also sending data to Google that can potentially identify users, ProPublica's analysis found, including a random number that is unique to a user's browser, which can then be linked to other collected data. This seems like, uh, like why, like, People should use like a VPN and like other various tools uh, to try and like increase your uh, your privacy, your security. It's it's really fuck. This is not good. <sighs> Representatives for the nine sites did not respond to requests for comment. All were recommended on the popular website Plan C, which provides information on how to get abortion pills by mail, including in states where abortion is illegal. Plan C acknowledged that it does not have control over these sites or their privacy practices. Yeah. But perhaps it would be good for Plan C to uh, to check out some other, like, um, places <laughs> so that they can, uh, pro like, promote not ones that are tracking people so dangerously. Because, obviously, that can – this can put some people into, uh, like – some hot water with legally if they're in a state where abortion is illegal. Like that's not, it's not good at all. <sighs> yeah. I was just, uh, if, uh, if people watch red reviews, me and Justin just uh, recorded a new episode last night, uh, regarding uh, the book, the inner internet for the people by, uh, Ben Tarnoff. I think that's who it was. And he, uh, we, we kind of talked about this, like this privacy thing, like you don't really have privacy online. A lot of the tools that we think we are using to be private or to be uh, secure kind of don't work. <laughs> so uh, it's, yeah, it's not good. Uh, Google pledged last year that it would delete location history data, history data related to people's visits in abortion and fertility clinics, but the company has not announced any changes since then related to data involving abortion pill providers or how it handles government requests for data. A Google spokesperson did not respond when asked whether the company has turned over any data to law enforcement about users of online pharmacies that provide abortion medication or whether it has been asked to do so. This has been this is problematic and dangerous, both the potential access that law enforcement has to figure out who is violating our new state bans and that we've let tech companies know so much about our private lives, says Anya Prince, a law professor at the University of Iowa who focuses on health privacy. It shows us how powerful this data is in scary ways. Hmm. Yeah, that's I don't know how many ways I can say it's this is not good. Uh, medication abortion. Using medications to endorse an abortion involves taking two drugs. Mifepristone blocks the hormone progesterone, effectively stopping the growth of the pregnancy. Misoprostol, taken a day or two later, helps the uterus contract, emptying it of the pregnancy tissue. This drug combination is the most is most commonly used method of abortion, accounting for more than half of the abortions in the United States. Demand for the drug is expected to grow amid reproductive health clinic closures and the enactment of a cascade of state laws banning abortion since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade last June. 
At least 13 states now ban all methods of abortion, including medical medication abortion, though some allow exceptions for medical emergencies, rape, or incest. <sighs> Fuck sakes. This is the kind of story you read and you go, Jesus fucking Christ, like this is just terrible. Fucking United States. What the fuck? Just fucking awful. I'm going to go back to the Google, check out the next article or whatever. Oh, it refreshes because new articles come out all the time or something. U.S. divided over Roe's repeal as abortion foes gird for March. Uh, so that, this is all, that's an Associated Press. Donald Trump prepares for his return to Facebook and Twitter. Oh my God. Is he coming back? Oh my God. Turn into a fucking shit show. Even more so than it is now. Donald Trump prepares for his return to Facebook and Twitter. Mounting a comeback for the White House, Donald Trump is looking to regain control over his powerful social media accounts. Um, Without Aska access to his Twitter account back, Trump's campaign is formally petitioning Facebook's parent company to unblock his account there after it was locked in response to the Capitol riot two years ago. We believe that the ban on President Trump's account on Facebook has dramatically distorted and inhibited the public discourse. Yeah. Get fucked. Like, get fucked. <laughs> Trump's campaign didn't threaten a lawsuit, as some sources close to Trump thought he would. It instead talked about the importance of free speech and the petition meta for a meeting to discuss President Trump's prompt green statement on the platform. A meta spokesperson <clears throat> declined to comment about Trump beyond saying, the company will announce a decision in the coming weeks in line with the process we laid out. Facebook and Twitter banned Trump a day after a mob of his supporters, many of whom have admitted in federal court that they were ripped up by his lies of a stolen election, stormed the Capitol and interfered with Congress. Yeah, so on and so forth. Facebook ultimately decided to institute a limited ban on Trump that would come up for review after two years, starting January 7th of this year. So they're, they're uh, I guess, it's time for the review. And Twitter planned an, a permanent ban, but new owner Elon Musk reinstated his account on November 19th. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, Elon Musk is a fucking shit show of a person too. <laughs> this is 1984 censorship. Fascist yelled at his club. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just absurd that, that uh, <laughs> these, the, I'm being censored. Oh my God. I wish you were being censored. I wish we didn't fucking have to hear about your bullshit attitudes and opinions. And yeah. What about Canadian news? Let's Google Canadian news. I saw something today on, on uh, CBC. I thought Canadian news. Canadian defense minister announces passage of 200 Senator APCs to Ukraine. Ugh. So this is something that I, I don't, I'm not a fan of really. I understand that people uh, people are suffering and like uh, the invasion of Ukraine was uh, is unjust and 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 not just like not good in any way. Um, but Anita Anand, Canadian Defense Minister, is vi visiting Kiev. Uh, she has announced that her country will hand over 200 Senator APCs to Ukraine. Uh, the quote, the new package of military assistance responds to a specific Ukrainian request for these vehicles, which are being purchased from Rochelle, a Canadian company based in Mississauga, Ontario. This aid is valued at over $90 million and is allocated as part of the additional $500 million in military aid for Ukraine announced by Prime Minister Trudeau in November 2022, according to the statement. Senator APCs are equipped with state-of-the-art, best-in-class, technology and weapons can easily be mounted on them these vehicles allow for the safe transport of personnel and equipment and medical evacuations well i mean i want i do want the safe transport of people and medical uh evacuations it's just like like i was talking to justin i, I mentioned talking to justin last night and we talk about like the u.s and, and canada spending money and sending aid to ukraine and like i can i i can understand the Ukraine side of it. Like you've been invaded unjustly. There are people who need help. There are people who are, are uh, in need of, uh, you know, assistance and whatnot. But also like we have lots of problems in Canada that uh, $90 million could help with. 
$500 million overall could help with lots of this stuff. So, ooh, what's this? Slightly less serious, perhaps. And it's in a prison, but a drug carrying pigeon in a Canadian prison yard. Officers at a Canadian prison nabbed a drug smuggler who would definitely be considered a flight risk. Oh, 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 oh yuck. <laughs> The culprit, a meth-carrying pigeon. In a scheme straight out of the Middle Ages, authorities... Who writes this stuff? I mean, this is high time, so I guess you get what you get. Uh, in a scheme straight out of the Middle Ages, authorities at the Pacific Institution in Abbotsford, a correctional facility about 50 miles away from Vancouver, reported capturing a pigeon carrying a tiny backpack filled with illicit drugs in the prison yard late ma last month, according to Yahoo. <clears throat> Still not big enough, is it? There we go. Yahoo reports that a tiny fabric backpack tied to the pigeon contained crystal meth and that guards in the at the prison spotted the bird and its cargo on December 29th in one of the facility's recreation yards. It was spotted by correctional officers, I believe, and security intelligence officers when the officers were doing their standard patrols around and throughout the unit and institution. That's when they initially spotted the bird with the package on it. John Randall, a spokesperson for the Union of Canadian Correctional Officers, said, as quoted by Yahoo. The officers then set up a trap to capture it. Uh, the CBC, I don't know why they said the Canadian Broadcasting Company. The CBC has more. <laughs> uh, let's open that in a new tab just to be fun. Oh, uh, yeah. Officers were standing in one of the fenced inmate unit yards, which prisoners use regularly for hanging out, playing games, or just getting some fresh air. From my understanding, it was tied... Notices something strange, a gray bird with a small package on its back. That's interesting. Somebody just, I mean, good, good for them, honestly. <laughs> good. Not, not for the correctional, but good for like the in initiative, the people trying to send uh, meth into the, the prison. Like that's, that's pretty creative stuff. 30 grams of crystal. That bird was strong. 30 grams isn't like a small amount. That's a decent amount. A fairly substantial amount of the intensely addictive stimulant. Yeah, well, fascinating. Yeah, okay. So on and so forth. Oh, let's go back. <laughs> Why do some Canadian provinces hope to get rid of the iconic Mounties? <sighs> okay. Let's see. Control plus plus. Yeah. Looks like it'll work. The Canadian Royal Mount the Royal Canadian Mounted Police has been a mainstay of Canada's federal police since the country's founding. Fuck you. But a number of recent yeah, like the RCMP actually was sent in first to like like wipe out entire regions of indigenous folks. Uh like it's pretty awful history. But a number of recent failings, tragedies, and scandals have some communities exploring alternative policing options. It's not just them. Like that's like where's the where's the rest of the story? Is there another is there more to this story? Or is it just a, a million ads? Scroll down. Nope, that's it. That's the entire story. <laughs> okay. Thank you, MSN, for being fucking useless. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh well, let's go see. Let's go see the CBC. CBC. Uh Top stories. Ontario Integrity Commissioner investigated. Investigating government decision to open Greenbelt land to housing development. Okay. RCMP not banning controversial neck hold despite instructions from minister. Oh. Surprise, surprise. The police fucking suck. I don't... <laughs> this is not news. This is a well-known fact. Um... Commissioner promised to review the cartoid control technique after uh, George Floyd's death in the U.S. Okay. RCMP says it will keep instructions extracting officers to use the controversial cartoid control technique in rare cases ex despite directions from the federal government to ban the use of neck restraints in all circumstances. The cartoid control hold involves compressing the arteries on either side of a person's neck causing the person being restrained to slip into unconsciousness. When used correctly, the restraint doesn't restrict breathing, but it has, but its use has come under scrutiny of, 
<sighs> when used correctly. When used correctly, get fucked. Like, get fucked. <sighs> this is fucking brutal. Concerns about, uh, yeah, I mean, there are concerns about police brutality and the fact that they don't use their fucking holds properly and people fucking choke out and die. Like, get fucked. Fucking CBC. <laughs> In his mandate letter to Commissioner Brenda Lukey last year, Public Safety Minister Mark Med Mendicino asked her to prohibit the use of neck restraints in any circumstance and the use of tear gas or rubber bullets for crowd control. Yeah, because it's fucking terrible. A spokesperson for the RCMP told CBC News Wednesday that the National Police Force has not banned or placed a moratorium on the use of cartoid control technique. <sighs> because they're fucking awful. Because the police are awful. Instead, Robin Percival said the RCMP issued new guidance to its officers late last year that strengthens and clarifies definitions, oversight, and accountability measures. Uh, it's just bureauc bureaucratic nonsense. The risks of applying the technique on medically high-risk groups, requirements for medical attention, the threshold for use, and requirement of to recertify annually on the policy regarding application. Uh, this is why we want the police defunded, or one of the many, many reasons why we want the police defunded. This is just terrible, terrible, terrible fucking policy. Um, okay, let's go back to that home screen, the top stories. For every dollar donated to the CNIB's Urgent Guide Dog Campaign, it spends 52 cents on fundraising. Well, that's bad. Um, Air Canada lost her stepdad's custom wheelchair and its sy systemic issue, disability advocates say. Let's check that out. Air Canada lost her dad's stepson. Stepdad's Air Canada lost her stepdad's custom wheelchair. One advocate says it's a non, not a one-off. Airline provided 300 and a loaner wheelchair, but family says transferring man in and out of the chair isn't safe. A Brantford, Ontario man has been stranded in Chile without his custom wheelchair after his stepdaughter says Air Canada lost it. How the fuck do you lose a fucking wheelchair? Like, come on. Jim Hamilton and his wife Kathy embarked on a trip to Santiago, the Chilean capital, capital with Air Canada on Sunday. It's the first trip they've taken since Hamilton. 63 suffered a stroke that left him in a, using a wheelchair in 2021. And when, but when they arrived, they were being told, they were told the wheelchair hadn't made the trip with them. Hamilton's stepdaughter, Wendy Elliott, has been trying to help them as much as possible from Toronto. She told CBC Toronto the situation has left her feeling helpless and angry. Mm hmm. A wheelchair is not a piece of luggage. It is not a piece of sports equipment. Yeah. It's not an accessory. He relies on it for his life. Yeah. Fucking ridiculous. Airline provided a voucher and a loaner wheelchair. Well, I mean, fuck them. Like, Jesus Christ, that's terrible. After searching the Santiago airport for this wheelchair, worth anywhere from $5,000 to $7,500, according to the family, Air Canada representatives prov provided Hamilton with a $300 voucher and a loaner wheelchair. $300 loaner. <laughs> a $300 voucher and a loaner. Because that's going to replace the very expensive custom wheelchair. Um. Let's get to the story about a systemic issue, advocate says. Hamilton's situation is far from an isolated incident, says Mayan Ziv, a disability advocate and the CEO of accessibility app Access Now. Last September, CBC Toronto reported a similar story that involved Ziv's wheelchair being damaged in an Air Canada flight when she flew to an accessibility conference in Tel Aviv. I'm unfortunately not Really not surprised when we're continuing to see stories and cases of people with disabilities who have had their mobility devices damaged or lost. This is a systemic issue. Not It's not a one-off mistake. Air Canada covered the cost of a new wheelchair, but the disability advocate said this was the bare minimum that the airline could do. Of course, they're they're not going to go above and beyond, right? They, uh, they don't actually care. <laughs> Under the Accessibility Canada Act, which includes the section on transportation, airlines are legally required to treat people with disabilities with dignity, respect, and equitable rights. The act also requires them to replace or reimburse any lost mobility devices if it is not recovered within 96 hours of arrival. But we don't yet see enough teeth in that legislation to actually hold airlines accountable, Ziv said. More needs to be done to combat ableism advocate uh, Anthony Frizina Volunteer Director of Media Relations for the Ontario Disability Coalition agreed that more needs to be done on a policy level to combat ableism in the travel industry. 
We need proper assurances, policy at the government level, he said, making sure that we have much needed policy and practices in place by giving people with disabilities the opportunity to be part of the solution. <sighs> Frazina wants to see more people who use mobility devices to be part of the decision making when it comes to accessible travel. That makes that makes perfect sense to me. As well, airlines should be training their staff to be able to properly care for and stow all kinds of mobility devices, including wheelchairs, but also scooters, crutches, and walkers, Rosina said. He also stressed that asking someone to switch to another mobility device can be dangerous. It could be detrimental to one's health in terms of transfer or even uh, maneuvering that mobility device because it's not set to their needs. Yeah, so... I mean, this is a shitty story and it demonstrates like a, a real uh, lack of uh, a lack of like care on the part of the airline. At the very least, they could uh, start giving a shit and actually like try not breaking people's stuff. Canada said it will oh, 200 armor vehicles. We already talked about that. Ukraine's interior minister among the least at least 14 killed in suburban suburban Kiev helicopter crash. I saw this on the news this morning as well. Quick. Uh, Danis Monastri Ski uh, is most most senior Ukrainian official to have died since the start of the war of, with Russia. A minute and nine. Uh, I'm not going to watch it. No, not going to do it. Ukraine's interior minister and child were among at least 14 people killed on Wednesday when a helicopter crashed into a preschool and set it ablaze. Well, that's awful. Uh, the crash of the French. Like, I care more about the child uh, and the danger to children here than I do about uh, the interior minister. I'm sure uh, as an interior minister, you're very a very important person, whatever. Um, children are pretty important. In my opinion, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong in my hierarchy of uh, importance. There, the crash of the French Super Puma helicopter in Brovary, northeast of the capital, caused a large fire. An entire side of the school building was charred. Debris was scattered over a muddy playground. In a courtyard, lay several dead Interior Ministry staff. Geez, their blue uniforms and black. You don't really have to describe it, just for your word count, bud. Um, President Zelensky said the full casualty toll was still being determined and he had ordered an investigation into the terrible tra tragedy, said the pain is uh, unspeakable. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, coming up on just, just shy of an hour, short of an hour. Let's take another quick look at trending on Twitter. I don't know who Joe, Jay Briscoe is. I'm not a wrestling guy. Uh, these are sports, sports, business, bits, lato. What's bits, lato? Google, or duck, duck, go for it. Bits, lato. Oh, cryptocurrency. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, let's show this tab instead. Another MSN article. They're fucking not the best. Oh, but it is from Fox Business. So it's maybe MSN is just the tool. Bits Lotto, cryptocurrency founder, arrested, accused of illegal money transfers worth hundreds of millions. Oof. Department of Justice officials on Wednesday announced the arrest of a Russian executive accused of Russia running a cryptocurrency exchange that facilitated illicit transactions involving drugs and money laundering. Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco, Monaco held a press conference with federal prosecutors and FBI officials announcing the arrest of Bits, Bits Lotto. Limited founder and majority owner Anatoly Legkodmov. <laughs> I'm really bad with names. Sorry. On Tuesday, uh, he's a Russian national who lives in China. His cryptocurrency exchange, BitsLado, is registered in Hong Kong and advertises itself as requiring minimal identification from users. Bitslato is accused of transporting and transmitting illicit funds and facilitating other crimes in cryptocurrency transactions with Hydra Market, which DOJ officials described as an anonymous, illicit online marketplace for narcotics, stolen financial information, information, fraudulent identification documents, and money laundering services. That was the largest and longest running 
dark net market in the world. Wow. Okay. Interesting stuff. Um, next week, I'm going to try and have some uh, current events kind of prepared. Well, not next week, but in two weeks when I do uh, a current event segment again, I'm going to try and have uh, some some stuff prepared so I'm not just Googling things on the fly. Um, but this isn't too bad. It's just at first, like you try and you're like, oh my God, there's nothing interesting going on. But there's there's some stuff. You just got to kind of kind of go with the flow. Oh yeah, I guess I never covered Davos. Sakes, news. Uh, am I going to be able to read this New York Times article? What? <laughs> oh, uh, you a crypto bro doing illegal times. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, you do more prep than I do for the show. <laughs> well, uh, I have done hardly any prep. Today I did almost nothing. I just saw some news at the gym this morning. But I would like to, uh, uh, I would like to do more prep so that I actually don't have to like sit here and Google things. I, Duck, duck, go search. Search on duck, duck, go for things. But yeah, I can't read the New York Times article on on uh, Davos. Oh, here we go. There's a CNBC article. Okay, so this is the World Economic Forum. Remember, this is this is the ultimate in conspiracy nonsense. Present this. Share screen. Uh, threat of transatlantic trade war. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy, the World Economic Forum, Davos, Switzerland. Switzerland, it's the talk of the town. Oh God, I, is it just me or like I hate the way that fucking people write news article now as though they're it's conversational. Like you're not entertaining me. Just just give me the fucking facts. Like <laughs> you don't need to pun in your headline. You don't need to be witty. Just write the fucking news. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, it's a bit of a rant. <laughs> anyway. Uh, transatlantic trade tensions are dominating conversations in the World Economic Forum this week, which there is a link through to that. I wonder if I should open that in a new tab. On the one hand, European officials are saying they will come up with more financial support for European firms. On the other hand, the business community is excited about green subsidies stateside and argue the EU needs to match what the US administration is doing. Ultimately, the pressure is on the European institutions, but the question is how far they, are they willing to go? Uh, it all started with Joe, President Joe Biden's sweeping legislation, the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act. It was approved in August and includes more than $300 billion in spending on climate and energy policies. The plan was not very well received in Europe because it provides tax credits when consumers buy electric car vehicles made in North America. <sighs> The concern for Europeans is that businesses will invest in the U.S. See, all this shit is like, it's all capitalists just fucking arguing over who gets the dollars, right? Like, it fucking drives me crazy. Uh, <laughs> the concern for Europeans is that businesses will invest in the U.S. rather than in Europe so they can qualify for massive fiscal support. And they've gone as far as saying that the American legislation breaches international trade rules. It's a big elephant in the room. It has shaken up the European Union. The discussion between politicians, civil society, and even industry. Ilham Kadri, CEO of Solve, a chemical company headquartered in Belgium, said during an event in Davos on Tuesday evening. No uh, comment. I always write conversationally, but I don't write the news. <laughs> yeah, same here. Like I, when I write, I write conversationally because my writing is meant uh, as a conversation. Like I'm, I'm a person talking to other people most of the time. So. Like I do this show conversationally as though there was somebody, you know, listening. And today there happens to be. Thank you very much, some random geek. <laughs> but it's when it's the news, it makes me it makes my head go like, almost want to explode. Uh, so we're listening to Ilham Kadri, CEO of Solve, uh, which I assume is a giant fucking corporation. But uh, he's mad. Uh, the reality is that the Biden administration incentivizes when Europe regulates to put it in black and white. Well, I mean, that's that's true. That's absolutely true. The the U.S. is very well liked by business because they don't regulate anything because it's just a fucking free for all. And they hand out fucking subsidies like it's candy. Like it, it's it's pretty absurd when we talk about like oil prices and gas prices 
here, like the reason that gas prices are not that bad in some places is because they subsidize the oil industry because we're handing out money from the government to the to the companies and then they, you know, so they don't gouge the, the person at the pumps that much. But it's still coming out of the pocket of somebody and into fucking rich people's pockets. Instead of just like regulating, like price fixing, like saying there's a cap on profits or some something like that. Like instead of taxing them appropriately, they're just like, no, nah, we're just going to give you subsidies. And instead, uh, we'll fucking, <laughs> that way you won't necessarily gauge, gouge consumers as badly. Anyway. Uh, the EU has been lobbying hard to ensure that European companies will be able to benefit from the tax incentives without needing to relocate, for example. Oh. The U.S. Treasury Department issued guidance in late December that would allow EU companies to benefit from certain credits without needing to alter their business models. However, other guidance on how the legislation will be implemented is still outstanding, hence the continued conversations between European and American officials. Uh, I think that's all. I'm not gonna. I mean, so there's there's a threat of a trade war. Biden's IRA has issued an internal debate in Europe where there's only one real consensus. The EU needs to come up with its own plan to support the region's competitiveness. They always talk about this shit. Like, aren't we actually worried about climate change? Like, aren't we actually like trying to do something about the cry the climate collapse and the crisis that we're facing that could actually like impact everybody's lives? But no, it doesn't seem like that's a uh, that's a, a major issue. We're worried about trade. We're worried about the well-being and the profits of major corporations. <sighs> it makes me crazy. It makes me very frustrated. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Anyway, uh, so for uh, for our conspiracy theory friends, uh, this is Davos. This is the World Economic Forum. They are 100% capitalist. They are not instituting a, uh, a communist uh, dictatorship over Canada or anybody else. They are worried about profits. <laughs> That's what this is. <laughs> it's just like corporations all the fucking time. Um, yeah, they have like a whole section on Davos on the CNBC. I'm not really going to go through it. I think that's it. I think I'm done for today. I've been on for an hour. I got other shit to do. I've got like uh, red reviews to edit and publish hopefully before the end of the week. And I've got, uh, I've got all week's streams to edit and, uh, and uh, hopefully publish on YouTube before the end of the week. So thanks for joining me. Some random geek. Thanks for watching anybody who watches this on after the fact or on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, keep in touch. Hit the like button on YouTube, all that jazz. I'll, uh, I appreciate everybody who uh, watches my stuff. Have a good one.